with books like Song of the Dark Crystal, Ties of the Dark Crystal, Shadow of the Dark Crystal, Legends of the Dark Crystal, Volumes 1 and 2, The Dark Crystal Tells, Power of the Dark Crystal, and Beneath the Dark Crystal, what's there to be confused about with reading order? Stumbled upon a great world to learn and know. Well, howdy y'all, this is Jason Delgado, and welcome to The Dark Crystal Conjunction, your YouTube source to nerd out about all things The Dark Crystal. Today, we're going to be looking at the reading order in the timeline of Thra of all the Dark Crystal media that is out. And I am trying something new. I really just have the timeline from the website. If you go to the website, darkcrystal.com, and click on Mythology, there you have this really long timeline. And if you have not read it yet, uh, it is really good. However, I would keep from reading some of it if you haven't read all the media that's out there yet regarding the Dark Crystal, because I think this does have some spoilers in it. So if you see the whole timeline here, it's really long, uh, really big. Again, there are just three basic ages of Thrall. I, I screenshotted this whole timeline. I conjoined it all together and made a much smaller timeline. So here you can see my kind of joined together timeline. Here's the beginning of Thrall up top, which begins the Age of Innocence. And if you've seen any of our lore videos, this is where we start. This is where we see the beginning of Thra, the origins of Agra, and whatnot. Agra has a son, that's going to be part of our next lore video. You know, we saw the Gelflings, that was also part of the original creation of Thra as well. And then, that's when we hit the first conjunction. After the first conjunction, that's when the Urskex arrive, and then that brings in the Age of Harmony. There's a lot of stuff that happens between there. Again, I, I whittled it a lot down, uh, because I don't want to kind of have any spoilers in there and uh, then you get to the second great conjunction and so forth and so on I am going to assume that you have at least seen the Dark Crystal movie that's kind of a must have see if you haven't seen that yet you need to stop this video see the Dark Crystal the 1982 cult fan film or no, just cult film uh, fan cult film or how does it go I don't know see the movie that's the main important thing that's the, that's kind of the nexus that's the center thing of of what all the rest of the media is built around the one movie so it's pretty amazing we have a franchise just based off that one movie from 35 years ago but we do so first thing you need to do is you for sure need to see the dark crystal the movie after that i uh do have this timeline here as well let me talk about a couple of books a couple of other books here before I dive more heavily into this timeline. There are uh, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what order do I read the books in? Which ones should I get first? Which ones are necessary reading? Which ones aren't? So first, let me just mention two behind the scenes works. There is the making of the Dark Crystal, creating a unique film. That's by Christopher Finch. That came out in 1983. It is a 96 page. It's like a paperback type book. It's it's pretty small. Um, it's it's taller than a normal book. Uh, almost magazine style, but it's you know there's not a hardcover. It's not a, it's a collector's item for sure. It's out of print, but it's not like put it on your coffee table and looks really nice or something like that. We just have a lot of great behind the scenes look at the technical wizardry and performing the originality of the Dark Crystal and examines the new puppetry and film techniques used to create the imaginative fantasy movie. Deep inside. Also, from there, we also do have The Dark Crystal, The Ultimate Visual History. This just came out last year. This is by Cassine Gaines. came out in 2017. It's 192 pages. This is a deluxe coffee table book. It contains an in-depth look at the day-to-day -day production of the film and showcases a huge range of incredible visuals, including candid set photos, previously unseen concept art, storyboards, production notes, and so much more. Really beautiful book. I love uh, this new visual history. It's really great stuff. But those are the kind of behind-the-scenes work. If you read those, you're not going to really learn more about in-universe thrall lore or things like that. I mean, maybe a little bit here and there, but not really that much more. So now we're going to be diving into the books that talk about the story that is surrounded by the Dark Crystal and Dark Crystal lore and things like that. I do want you to know that I do want to be wary of spoilers. I don't want to bring out any spoilers. Again, I'm assuming you've seen the movie. You haven't seen the movie? At least seen the movie. Uh, I won't be saying much more than what the book blurb is going to say. And actually, in some cases, I'm not even saying all that the, blurb, that the book blurb says because sometimes they reveal too much, I think. I think that a lot of them have a little too much spoilers. And I'm, I'm a fan of just staying away from all that. You know, I don't even like to see trailers of some movies that I know I'm going to watch anyways. Um, that way I can really come to it with fresh eyes the way the author intended. Uh, and lastly, I will be giving you my own personal reading order. There's not like a set rule of how to do it and best practice or things like that. I'll give you my opinion why I think my way is the best way, uh, but that's really all I can do. It's my opinion. So take that for what it is. I'm just a guy with the YouTube channel. So it doesn't really mean much more than that. 
All right, so we talked about the two behind the scenes collected works. Uh, there is also a hybrid work before we get directly into the media. And let's go back to our timeline here. As you can see, I, I whittled down this timeline greatly. The, the original timeline looks like this when you have the whole thing. And there's so much here. And again, I would not go through all this because it, I think it does contain some spoilers if you haven't read everything. So don't look through all this yet if you haven't read uh, every bit of Dark Crystal lore out there. I kind of, I see, as you can see, I whittled it down a lot. And I did that with, it, it does still say events that happen, but these are things that are very well known or were alluded to in the movie or had flashbacks in the movie. So I think they're all safe. Or again, they're all in the blurbs of some of the, the more famous books out there. So with that, let me switch to our other graphic where I put the books together with it. So here you can see, beginning with The Age of Innocence, the first book I would recommend is The World of the Dark Crystal. And this is really a very hybrid type book because it's not only, um, not only contains a story about the Dark Crystal, it also contains behind the scenes material. It does contain a portfolio of sketches, paintings, diagrams, and other background works created for the film. The book also features descriptions and narratives told from the point of view of Augur, and that's where the story comes in. The book was first released in 1982. It soon went out of print. You know, that's a, it's more rare collector's edition there. And uh, it did get re-released in 2003 as under the collector's edition. Uh, new essays by Froud, some more original artwork and text, number four scene uh, published paintings, drawings, sculptures of the film's archives, etc., etc. And one of the coolest parts about it is it came with a 20-page presentation booklet called The Crystal, which was extremely rare before they had brought this out. Uh, from what I had read previously, there's only about 20 known facsimiles, of, or there's only 20 known original uh, of those pitch booklets still in circulation around the world. So it's cool that they made a facsimile of it. You can get your hands on it. I did make a video about that crystal pitch booklet. I'll put those in the cards for you to see yourself. But one of the reasons I really recommend, this is the first book you dive into, is that you get a lot of the little tidbits. And, you know, when you see some of the weird symbols and things like that in Thra, a lot of it is explained here. And that's because... Uh, this book is by J.J. Llewellyn and Brian Farad, and J.J. Llewellyn is a pen name for someone. You know, it's it's played off that it's an Oxford scholar and archaeologist who di who discover uh, a part of the Wall of Destiny, and from this they learn all this dark crystal lore. Really, it's it's, it's a cool way to, for them to show the behind the scenes concept art and things like that. Um, but it adds a lot to the lore actually, and makes it you know really adds on so much of this wonderful fantasy world that you've seen. In the movie, so if you're already enthralled with the fantasy setting in the movie, you get this book and it's just over the top. It is, it's incredible, it's amazing, and the book of Agra that's in it, which is Agra's basically Agra telling you the narrative of the movie and more. Um, it goes, it's it spans a very long age. Again, the very first age, starting from the beginning of Thra, was the Age of Innocence, and here you can see I, I can put where it spans. It spans the Age of Innocence through the Age of Harmony through the Age of Division, which is where the movie is set, and then. It goes all the way through to the end of the movie, which begins the Age of Power. So it spans four ages. Now, when it does that, it really gives the big meta narrative. It really zooms out. You see the forest. It doesn't really dive into the trees much. So it's a big overarching view. Again, this whole book is 132 pages, and only about half of it or less is Agra's story, and it's filled with full-page graphics. Sometimes the graphics take up both pages. The fonts are big, so it's not really that much. You could read through it. In 45 minutes, I bet the, the part with Agra uh, and the other part would maybe another 45 minutes. You'd probably spend a little more time because it has a lot of symbols and there's a lot of weirdness to that. It takes a little; it's a little heavier to digest. But I really recommend this first uh, because it gives you a big over overarching understanding of the world of Thra, and it's just a great book to have. It's beautiful. It's big. Looks wonderful on your coffee table. It's that, it's that kind of book, especially the collector's edition, uh, which came out in 2003, which is still pretty easy to get your hands on. But going down, um, so again, I call that book a hybrid because it's a behind the scenes and it's also a story. So now diving just straight into the story media, the very first book I would recommend is just really going along with the timeline of the world of Thra. 
And this is what we've already seen some of our lore videos on. So here, uh, these next books, or in this case, there's only one. It spans the Age of Innocence, which is the beginning of Thra, to the last parts of the Age of Harmony, which is the next. Uh, kind of, all these ages are really separated by the Great Conjunctions, at least these first three, four that we're going to see. So the first book I would recommend is Creation's Myth, Volume 1. And there you can see it here. And, and just because the picture is here doesn't mean it covers these exact areas. Uh, it just it falls under, really, I would read this this brown part over here. But I did try to line everything up. But this the first volume covers so much, I couldn't just stretch out the picture to where it just took up half uh, of the graphic and whatnot. But anyways, this is a graphic novel set 1,000 years before the crystal cracked, before the world of Thra fell to strife and destruction, which is really where we come into Thra when we get into the movie. It is the legend of Agra, the world's benevolent guardian, and her impish son, Ronip. It is a story of the gentle Gelflings and the rise and fall of their race. It is the saga of the Erskex, powerful alien visitors who arrive in peace, but who also harbor a dire secret. But most of all, it is the myth of the bright crystal and how its healing light is ultimately corrupted into darkness. This is a wonderful volume, uh, beautifully illustrated. Again, you, have all, you can see all the authors there on the bottom. And this does go from, again, the beginning of Thra, as we've seen in our first lore video about the origins of Thra. You have the origins of the Gelfling, Agra, and... Agra's son, and through to the first Great Conjunction. Kind of the Great Conjunctions are kind of the big moments that really change Thra. And at that first Great Conjunction is when the Urskex arrive. And that brings in a new age. As you can see there, it brings in the Age of Harmony. And this book does go through there where the Urskex create the Castle of the Crystal. And then the Urskex build Agra, the Great Observatory. Because she sees there's peace throughout the land, so she really starts setting her eyes to the heavens above to see what they can tell her. So the next section, that's, and that's the only book we have that covers that time of it, that area. It's a very peaceful area, not a lot of conflict, so there's not a lot of story there. Although this is a wonderful story. I love this very first volume. It's 90, Again, it's, it is 106 pages, if I didn't already say that. And this you could probably get through in an hour. So it's not too much reading. An hour, an hour and a half if you really want to focus and study some of the pictures. The artwork's wonderful and has a lot of cool little side stories as well. And they're presented as as passed down stories. Again, remember the Gelfling stories are passed down, you know, they're, they're kind of just storytellers and song tellers and their history is preserved orally. So uh, they don't have, you know, faxes and copies of and digital prints of their history and whatnot. It's, it's passed down. So some stories, for example, how the Gelflings get their wings is passed down in several ways. And you get to hear some of those stories in this volume. So it's a really cool volume. Definitely recommend this uh, as your first read. If you're not able to find this World of the Dark Crystal, which I've, I found one at my local library. So sometimes I'll just check it out and, and read it. I'm kind of saving my money to get it, try to find an original. I haven't found uh, one for a good price yet. But um, yeah, I mean, you probably just find this at your local library. Dive into it. I really enjoy it. But this is a really great one to own as well, World of the Dark Crystal. So again, uh, but if you can't get it, you, you wouldn't be wrong to start with the Dark Crystal Creation Myths. You for sure want to start here. Uh, you would just miss too much, I think, if you didn't have that background. Again, all, all this is generally laid out in World of the Dark Crystal, but it's in great detail, uh, a lot greater detail in Creation Myths Volume 1. So with that, the next area spans the end of the Age of Harmony, that that second age we saw and the start of the age of division so this is where the second great conjunction occurs and with the second great conjunction we get the division of the Erskex and then what is called as, as we see here the age of division where the crystal is cracked and again we see that in some of the flashbacks in the movie that this really changes the world of Thra and brings in a lot of conflict so after this point there's gonna be a lot of story because there's a lot of conflict at this point but for now, from you know, spanning the end of the Age of Harmony to the start of the Age of Division, there's only one volume we have on it. And I think, again, this is another great book. So this one came out, Creation Myths Volume 2, came out in 2013. It's 104 pages. And it uh, the, the blurb and summary kind of read this. Another great conjunction is at hand in this dramatic second volume from Archaea and the Jim Henson Company. You get more Agra, more for Sun Ronip, more Gelflings, and you get to bear witness as the visiting Erskex attempt to use the conjunction to power their voyage home. But, as we know from the movie, the crystal cracks for various reasons, which you will learn about when you read this excellent volume. And this leads 
the world of Thra to really start to corrupt from its very core, uh, starting with the crystal. The transformation of the ur Skeks into two distinct races, the gentle Uru and the terrifying Skeksis, which of course you know happens if you've seen the movie, which is why I'm saying you have to see the movie first. Uh, also, Brian Froud does return to oversee this crucial chapter as he did the last creation myth, and some of the characters are, are from his original designs as well. But uh, really good stuff. Definitely recommend, you know, read Creation Myths Volume 1, so then just keep following it and go to Creation Mist Volume 2. And from there, you can probably guess what my next recommendation will be. Well, there it is, Creation Mist Volume 3. But this is going to bring us to another another time span we're going to deal with, and it's the span uh, of the Age of Division. So after all this heavy drama happens at the second Great Conjunction, the Great Division, the Crystal is cracked, because there's so much conflict, there's so much room for story at this point. So here at this age of the vision, and really I broke this section up to everything that's going to happen between uh, between that second volume from the age of the vision through the film, because the film is, is a really big central point. And so even though the film takes place in the same age of the vision as well, uh, I kind of separated its own because it's, it's, you know, all the other stories are built around that and kind of either pointing to it or pointing back to the movie. You know, that's kind of the, like I said, the nexus, it's the, it's the central central storytelling element of all this. So anyways, Creation Myths Volume 3 came out in 2015, 98 pages. Following the events of the Great Conjunction, the once powerful Urskeks have been split into two separate beings, the Skeksis and the Mystics. And we see what the aftermath of the last Great Conjunction brings upon the Gelfling tribes and the tough choices they have to make. Coolest part of this one is the unused underground creatures that Henson had planned for the original movie. It, you can even see it in the Crystal Pitch booklet. Uh, but it ultimately got cut. However, in this volume, they do become a major character in this volume three of the creation myths, as you can see it here. Uh, it does leave a lot open. There's a lot more story they could have told between there, uh, but it, it does you know, wrap things up rather nicely, but I wouldn't say wrap up everything. It leaves a lot of stories, but it does answer a lot of questions. The first three volumes of the creation myths are excellent. Um, you can still go to comic book shops and find these bound together. I know you can order them online pretty easily. They're only a couple years old. Um, these also do offer interviews and behind-the-scenes art from the comic as well if, uh, in all the editions that they have now of these. Also, the first volume does include the free Comic Book Day adaption or the free Comic Book Day comic that came out, which was kind of the trailer for that. So it, it is different artwork. It, well, it's, it's by the same artist, same style, same storytelling, but you do get different scenes and frames. It's, I think it's only eight pages and whatnot. It's a really good teaser trailer to volume one but that's included in it you can read that in whatever order you want uh, it doesn't make that big of a difference the next document you have and here's where i'm going to kind of disagree with some people on what is best to read next after you've read the first three volumes of creation myth and i think everyone would agree with me on that because next after that point you have a long period of time within the age of division until you hit you know the the four young adult novels. There's only three pictured here, you know, Shadows of the Dark Crystal, Song of the Dark Crystal, and Tides of the Dark Crystal, because the fourth one, we don't know the name of it yet, and Tides hasn't even been released. That's coming out uh, this Christmas time, uh, 2018, that is. There is a document called The Gelfling Gathering that the Henson Company made in 2013. It's just an 18-page small PDF. You know, some, some of the pages are just full-size pictures or just one-sentence quotes. So it's, this is a... Uh, you could you could get through this 10 15 minutes uh, it's really fun it's a really cool little document it was developed for the author's quest when they were trying to just, just figure out who's going to write write their books they put together this document so it contains a lot of lore a lot of canon it, it, it kind of wrote the rules of canon it set kind of the big big checkpoints in canon if you will and then they were just hoping people would fill in the gaps with other stories and that's exactly what shadows of the dark crystal song and tides of the dark crystal and whatever the next book's going to be named, are set out to do those books by J.M. Lee. However, I wouldn't recommend that you read this before you read Shadows, Songs, and Tides. I would recommend first that you read Shadows of the Dark Crystal. Um, Shadows of the Dark Crystal is, like, like I said, by J.M. Lee. It came out in 2016, so it came out three years later. So if when people were reading this as they came out, they were reading whatever they can get their hands on. So I understand why a lot of people read that first. It does set up the world at that time, how it is, uh, how the, what some of the Skeksis and Uru's powers were at that time when they were a lot stronger, that they're not as weak as when we see them in the movie, because by that time, you know, many hundreds of years have passed. But 
If you haven't read either of these yet, I would say wait on reading The Gelfin Gathering. Definitely read it. It's really fun and it's free. It's just you go to their website and you can get it. Uh, I would read Shadows of the Dark Crystal first. Again, let me tell you more about that. It's 272 pages. I, th- I think I read it in about a week and a half, and that was me coming home and reading for about an hour to two hours, depending on, on how much. But it was a page turner for me. Anyways, let me give you a little blurb about it. Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal, Shadows of the Dark Crystal, is set years before the events of the classic film and follows the journey of a young Gelfling woman who leaves her secluded home to uncover the truth surrounding the disappearance of her brother, who has been accused of treason by the sinister Skeksis lords. So it's ultimately a coming-of-age story, uh, a great epic adventure story as well, especially when you start getting to the other volumes. Uh, But besides that, I don't want to spoil anymore, and that's why I left a lot of stuff out here on the side. Uh, We do already have the formation of the seven Gelfling clans. You'll learn more about that in Shadows. You can get a lot of great detail about that in the Gelfling Gathering. But I think it's, it's fun to kind of read Shadows first because the main character, Naya, she leaves her swamp for the first time in like the first or second chapter and she sees the world of Thra for herself for the first time so it's really cool to explore that with her and learn about it with her from her eyes it's really cool i i really enjoy that and i would just recommend that for y'all as well after you've read shadows i would go back and read the gelfling gathering again it's a fun little document you'll be done with it in 10 minutes um and it's free so why not um, before the Gelfling create the Wall of Destiny, we do have these other books. I'm not going to say much about them, although if you love Shadows of the Dark Crystal, which most people I know who read it have, then you're going to just want to continue it because Song of the Dark Crystal picks up to the exact moment that Shadows leaves off. Uh, doesn't it, it does have an ending, doesn't necessarily leave off on a cliffhanger, but it just kind of like, and then they went to sleep, and then Song of the Dark Crystal kind of starts off, and the next morning when they woke up, and it, it continues on from there. Um, and I expect that that's what Tide is going to bring us as well. So you do want to read all these books together. They're really fun books, really great books, really take you back to the land of Thra. They do a great job of setting it up. And again, Thra at this point is starting to get darkened. You know, the crystal is cracked, it's affecting things, but it's not at the dark, dark, darkest point like we see it in the movie uh, where there's only two Gelfling left. So you have Gelfling clans and you see how all these different clans interact with each other. They're different powers and skills and traits and uh, it's super cool. Really fun. Really love it. And it seems like it's all building up to when the Gelfling create the Wall of Destiny. Which again, remember you do see the Wall of Destiny. It's what tells them the prophecy that with Gelfling hand, you know, they're going to be the ones who heal the crystal and whatnot. You do see that in the movie. And it seems like this point, this is the time frame when we're going to be getting the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. You know, I can't guarantee that, but from all I've heard and all I've read and all the little blurbs I've read about this, it seems like that's going to be what it is. Um, it is a prequel to the fantasy classic, you know, the only blurb we have about it. And it says that it's three young Gelfling inspire a rebellion against the cruel emperor when they discover a horrifying secret. So just based on that little blurb and everything else we know. Also that J.M. Lee, the author of this, does help out with this. And he does want, he is helping connect a lot of dots in the Age of Resistance from what I've heard. It seems like the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance will be next. Of course, this probably isn't coming out, you know, till... 2019 at the earliest and i would guess later in 2019 um just to not get my hopes uh, too far too far up if it comes out earlier you know i'm definitely going to watch it but it's most likely going to come out late 2019 or hopefully no delays it even comes out later but so we can't read that yet so in the meantime i would definitely read the shadow song and tides of the dark crystal whatever the fourth one Maybe, hopefully the fourth one comes out before the series, and we'll see how they connect when it comes out. You know, right now we can really only conjecture. Well, that brings us you know, further down the timeline. So here you see, um, here in the timeline, the Gartham Wars begin, and Lar and Nephi journey, dot, dot, dot. I kind of just dotted it out because I didn't want to uh, spoil what, what happens in these plots. So here you have these two mangas. These mangas came out, well, the first one came out in 2007. These are by uh, Barbara Randall Kessel, Heidi Arhold, and Max Kim. The first volume is 192 pages. Uh, this is the first of a two-part magna, manga that follows two young Gelflings, Laura and Elfie, as you can see there, after their village are attacked by the violent Gartham. This takes place during the time of what is known as the Gartham Wars. We get flashbacks of this time in the film when uh, Jen and Kira are having their dream fast, and you see you know, Kira's mom kind of hide her in a tree, and then a Gartham takes her, and then you see 
how the um, same thing. Jen says that the Garth Maul destroyed his home, and all he remembers is the, the kind, the kind one, the kind big one. You know, one of the Uru uh, picked him up and started to take care of him, and all the Uru did start taking care of him. Rather, after that one, you have directly picking up with Legends of the Dark Crystal Volume One, which is the the one in the back. You have here Dark Legends of the Dark Crystal Volume Two, and this is the first, and this is. Um, Came out in 2010. So it came out three years later. There was a lot of delays on it. It's 208 pages. It it they it was originally planned to be a trilogy, and then it seemed like they weren't going to make a trilogy anymore. So they tried to just finish it. So this one does seem a little rushed. You know, I would say that these two volumes I haven't really seen them connect to any other media, except that you kind of see what the Gartham Wars were like. A small snapshot, I would say. Uh, you see a small corner of, of Thra, I guess, being affected by it. Even though we know it must have been all of Thra. If there's only two Gelfling left in all of Thra by the time we hit the movie. So I would say that these you don't have to read. Uh, these are a little harder to find. There's no way to find these digitally even, which is really a bummer. Um, which that brings me to my, my other point. The creation myths... You can get these if you have uh, Kindle Unlimited or Comixology, which cost me four ninety nine a month. I can I can get all of these for free uh, under that subscription. All the three Dark Crystal Creation Myths, so it's really easy to access. Uh, really hard to find these. I was lucky enough to find these at my local library. You know, you can order them online. People sell them on eBay and whatnot, but um, they're okay. The artwork the artwork's cool. It's very action packed, even though they're you know one of them's two hundred pages. It seems like you could read through it in an hour and a half because some pages are just action, you know, just full pages of action. And uh, I think the art, you know, the artwork's it's fine for what it is. It's it's a manga. Um, the Gelfling don't look too Gelfling-ish to me. I think the guy kind of made it more like human noses, so that threw me off the first time I saw it. But uh, it was a fun story, and it's it is what it is. It's a fun little adventure. You know, kind of remind me of like the Han Solo movie. Like, there's not too much big significance of it. But it was a fun movie. You really like it. You're just like, oh, cool. I'm glad I saw that. That was fun. You know, I, I think you would say that if you if you read these. But if you can't get a hold of them, I don't think you're going to miss out on anything, honestly. Um, following that, you have this little book, Dark Crystal Tales. This is by Corey Godby. Again, wonderful illustrator. Um, he also writes the stories here. He is also the illustrator, I should have said, in, in Shadows, Songs, and Dark, and Tides of the Dark Crystal. Wonderful illustrations. I'll, I'll flash some of his illustrations from those books up here but when you read the dark crystal tells this is a, an, an adventure that takes place that gartham wars are done and we know two gelfling survive the gartham wars but this is before the movie and these are just little tiny stories it's three small stories this is only a 42 page book and half the pages don't even have words on them they're just full-size pictures but every picture is beautiful i mean this i this is one of my favorite modern day fantasy artists, Corey Godby. And so when I see him working on dark crystal stuff, it just, it fits so perfectly, looks so great. Again, you can see some of the images up there on the screen. Encourage you to check it out. It's, it's, it's small, you know, another one you probably just get from the library. I mean, this literally will take you, this is a, a 10 minute bedtime reading at the most. And that's usually because you're probably going to be laughing at the fizz gig pictures or something. So you need a little time for that. But again, this is an insignificant one. Doesn't change anything. Doesn't will have any connections to anything else really. Uh, but a wonderful little tale. I don't, I don't, I don't want to say that it's bad or anything. It's just, you know, unnecessary reading, but really great, really fun. So here now in our timeline, we are starting to get to the end of the age of division. And here we see that Ursu, the Master and Skekso, the Emperor, die. And we know that's how the movie, The Dark Crystal, begins. This movie, again, is, is the nexus where all the other stories are kind of built around from what I've noticed in all the uh, storytelling and whatnot. That it's, I think you already know about the movie, 93-minute movie, came out in 1982. There are a lot of supplemental uh, novelizations, comic book adaption, a lot of adaptions, I should say, to this movie. So big events that happen, obviously, Jen and Kira begin their quest. Uh, new Emperor, Kira's killed, and then, and then the third Great Conjunction occurs, which brings about, well, eventually, brings about the Age of Power. The third Great Conjunction occurs, the Dark Crystal is healed, and after all those, you know, all that time, the Skeksis and Uru recombine into the Urskex, you know, they leave, and Thra is restored, and of course, and they're also, Kira is revived, if you will. So, with the novelization, I'm sorry, with the movie, you get a lot of adaptations, 
there's only one of them that I'm going to recommend to read. The rest, the rest are more collector's type items. So let me go through those. So first, I would definitely recommend the novelization. You've heard me, if you've been on this channel for any period of time, you heard me rant and rave about the novelization. It was by A.C.H. Smith, came out again in the same year, 1982. It's 186 pages. There is a deluxe edition they printed in 2014, which is 240 pages. And it's a lot more pages because it includes some of the notes back and forth between Jim Henson and A.C.H. Smith, which really get into a lot more of the lore and a lot more of the hows and whys that Jim Henson wanted to do stuff in the movie. Jim Henson really took great care for the novelization. He saw it as a true extension of the movie. He didn't want to just, ah, you know, novelizations make money, let's just do one, whatever. He really wanted it to be good, and uh, so he put his time where his mouth was, and uh, it, it really is great. It's I love the novelization. You know, I, I, I did hear word that, when the darkers.com started and they had they had official forums that they were saying in there and this was during the time of the author quest you can't find this on the site anymore but they were saying that the dark crystal novelization isn't canon and you know with as much time as jim henson dealt with it and how much he worked with it alongside ach smith uh i don't know how they could say that and so you know, if there's only one thing I'm going to disagree that's like, no, that has to be canon. It's the novelization. I don't know why it wouldn't be. I mean, nothing butts heads with it. It's not like it contradicts anything that's new in the lore or anything like that. Uh, it brings out so much more detail. It explains a lot of the symbology and the um, mythology behind it and whatnot. And it also fills in some of the gaps between the scenes that, you know, either got cut from the movie or... Um, we're just not in the script, but, you know, the author has more liberty to get into, you know, to get in the mind of the characters. You know, it's one of the things that makes novels uh, so much better than the movies, usually. Of course, The Dark Crystal is a very visual movie, and the movie is incredible, uh, but A.C. Smith did a great job with the book as well. It is wonderful, and everyone I know who loves The Dark Crystal and read the novel, they've never regretted it. They're like, eh, it's kind of a waste of time. Like, they've always loved it, so uh, if you love The Dark Crystal, you, I would definitely recommend you read the novelization. All the other adaptations Adaptations, I think, are skippable. I think they're more just collector's type items. First, you have The Tale of the Dark Crystal. Uh, that was in hardback and soft cover, text by Donna Bass. It's illustrated by Bruce McNally. It's 48 pages, came out in 1982, and it's like those little golden books that are just, you know, basic retellings of the, of the movie. Nothing extra, nothing new. Um, does have some cool artwork, I admit that. But, you know, rather in insignificant. You know, it's more of a collector's item, really. There is also a read-along book that came on 7-inch, a record that is, or it also came out on a tape later. It originally came out in 1982. It's a 24-page small little booklet. Uh, I'll even play a clip here to where you can see it being played. Along with me in your book, you will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. In another time... In another world, gentle gelflings and simple podlings live together in peace. Those, I remember having some of these as a kid on my Teddy Ruxpin and, and other books on tapes and whatnot where basically, I guess if your parents were too tired to read to you, the tape would read to you and you, it would tell you when to turn the page, make a little chime and uh, lots of good childhood memories. Uh, again, another wonderful part of the 80s. There is also the Marvel Super Special number 24. This is a 68-page comic adaptation of the movie. The official comic adaptation of the movie came out in 1982 as well. It was reprinted in two low-quality prints, uh, two, two separate issues, that is. And that came out in April and May of 1983. I do have all three of those. And again, those are more collector's items. Some of the pictures are cool. Uh, I love that 80s style comic book artwork but you know you don't get anything extra it's not like there's deleted scenes or anything like that uh, it's just an adaptation of the movie not like the novelization where it goes way out further uh, and explains a lot more but it's just it's the movie just trimmed down basically with some comic book pictures uh it is great it is good though i don't mean to hope i'm not sounding like i'm talking bad about it and then lastly there is a discovery adventure by ann marcellino it is 24 pages, and this is coming out October 2018. And it reads that you could help Jen and Kara find the missing shard of eight Skeksis and heal their land in the stunning volume, gorgeously illustrated by artist Anne Marcelino. It's aimed at five to six-year-olds. It looks like it's like a, a seek-and-find type book. There's going to be little 
it's well you can see we only have the cover so we don't know what the artwork looks like inside i imagine it's similar um it looks like it's gonna be kind of like a well where's waldo type thing but maybe more basic so it's it's meant for it even says like oh entertain your kids in the car and things like that so you know you're not going to want to pick this up to get any more in depth or some behind the scenes thing or anything like that now, it's just a fun little book for children but again so all those things with the movie obviously see the movie first if you love the movie and love reading, I don't know how you don't want to read the novelization. It is so good. Uh, I really love it. It brings so much, so much, so much lore that, you know, they couldn't fit in the movie or, or, or they put in there and you saw it visually, but you might not know what it means. Uh, wonderful. But that's also something good that the world of the Dark Crystal book does as well. So with that brings us to a new age, the Age of Power. That's how the movie ends, bringing us to the Age of Power where the, where the crystal is healed. And with that, we have the true sequel of the Dark Crystal movie. You know, this was originally going to be a sequel movie, but it was in production for way too long. And uh, they eventually just made it into a comic book. This is The Power of the Dark Crystal. It came out in 2017 as a 12 part, the 12 part comic book series. Uh, the blurb of this is incredibly spoilery, so I'll just say that this is the official sequel to the original movie. Years have passed since the events of the original film, and though Jen and Kira have ruled Thra as king and queen, bringing Gelfling back to the land, they have become distracted by power and can no longer feel or see the needs of the world the way that they once did, which results in many, many consequences, which, again, are very spoilery. So I, I, I blanked out here. You can see in the timeline, and I took out a lot of other stuff from the timeline because I thought it was way too spoilery. Uh, it's funner just to pick up volume one or issue one and start reading it. So again, these are 12 part comic book series. They are also being printed in three volumes, three collected graphic novel volumes. Volume three doesn't come out until the fall. So if you are waiting on the volumes then you have to wait for that, the volumes do have, you know, behind the scenes stuff as well. You get to see some of the concept art and things like that. Some of the extra artwork, the variant artwork for the covers, but, um, these, you know, I've been to several comic stores around my area and I still see these. So it wouldn't be hard for you to find these still. Uh, they're only a year old. So that's, that's not too bad. And then for, and then after that, after the power of the dark crystal, there is a sequel to that. So this is kind of like the third dark crystal, if you will. Uh, it's beneath the dark crystal and issue number one. Again, I, I even cropped out some of the photo in case you haven't read power of the dark crystal and want to keep everything purely spoiler free i wouldn't even look at the cover yet until you read power of the dark crystal um and that's what i did i, I thought it was, it was really delightful to get to learn some of these new characters and different creatures uh from the story anyways beneath the dark crystal is coming out next month july of 2018 and it is also going to be a 12 part comic series hasn't been out yet we don't know really more than that uh besides well i don't even want to say it because it's it would be very spoilery if you haven't read Power of the Dark Crystal yet. And so since those are still coming out, still very new, I'm not going to go into any more detail about that. Um, as far as other books and other media, in case you just want to read everything that you possibly can get your hands on Dark Crystal, there is also the Crystal Author Quest. It's a Penguin special from Gossett and Dunlap. Uh, this includes writers J.M. Lee, Nancy Gray, Vinny Schiappini, sorry, I butchered your name, uh, Esther Palmer, and Greg Coles. It came out in 2014. It's 100 and 68 pages and those were the top five finalists of the author's quest of who was going to write those young adult novels you know ultimately obviously jam lee won but they just said they had so many good stories like they they, they wanted to publish them at least the, the final five uh, so it's really cool you know those stories aren't canon now but they're really fun really good fan fiction that impressed the jim henson company um, and a book publisher to where they almost got you know a uh, uh they almost got published themselves. So I would love to see those stories more fleshed out and made canon because some of them are really cool. So again, it's not necessary reading, uh, but it is really fun reading. You know, all those authors did a great job, really, really great job. And that, and th these are the top five finalists of nearly 500 entries. So it wasn't just like seven people entered and, oh, you're the top five. Congratulations. Like, no, like out of 500 ish uh, entry, like that's incredible. So good job to all those guys. I'm still really impressed how they, how they made uh, that young adult series happened through that author quest. Also, there is the Dark Crystal Artist Tribute. This is also coming out next month. A lot of new stuff's coming out next month. It is 112 pages, comes out July 2018, and it's going to include some of the variant artwork and cover artwork from the comic books and just just other artists Th these artist tributes really what they they ask these people like oh hey you're a famous artist can you 
do your own interpretation of the Dark Crystal. So you get a pretty wide variety of artwork here. And um, it says it's only 112 pages. You know, there's not going to be really any text. Sometimes they have small interviews in there, but it's just going to be full page, gorgeous pictures. And there's already some previews out there. And um, that, again, is going to make a pretty pretty uh coffee book type type book you know one you definitely want to thumb through and, and uh, have as a keepsake but again not necessary reading just other media doesn't have any story in it uh lastly there's, there's also a adult coloring book you can see one of my favorite parts is zooming in on physics and seeing how like tripped out he looks and that comes out next month as well july 2018 and that'll be 96 pages of you to color i mean you can color your own you can make is getting pink you know why not i mean he, he's, he turns out to be white in the uh, power of the dark crystal hello spoiler alert um but with that there is also maybe we could also fit in the jim henson biography that we talked about previously it does have a chapter about you know the world in his head it's titled if i remember and it is about jim henson his development of the, a fantasy world he wanted to make and ultimately that became the dark crystal so uh but the whole book isn't about the dark crystal but you do get a lot of cool information there uh, i don't think really too much more than you would get from some of the other behind the scenes books but uh it's well told really great biography and chances are if you like the dark crystal you probably like other hints and stuff so with that again let's go through the timeline very briefly you know what's the necessary reading that i would definitely recommend well if you're able to get your hands on the world of the dark crystal because it gives you that big macro view of everything that happens from the beginning of thraw through the end of the movie definitely you want to pick up the dark crystal creation myths volume one volume two and volume three at that point i would also read shadows of the dark crystal start there uh interlude it with the gelfling gathering very small free pdf you can get you know just a couple pages spend 10 minutes reading it uh then read song of the dark crystal tides of the dark crystal and then whatever the fourth whatever the dark crystal will be um you know, the legends ones it's fun it's skippable uh, but it, it's a fun little tell i don't think it has that much significance uh, although it is cool to see a little side of the gelfling you know so you know again whatever uh tells you know beautifully illustrated cute little tells again you know really no big significance to it but wonderfully done wonderfully done uh you should just read it just because it's so good um of course you the first thing you should do before i said all that very first thing you should do is see the dark crystal movie novelization you know if you have extra time if you haven't caught up in everything then i would read the novelization really i think you'll enjoy it and then at that point you'll want to you know get into the sequel of the dark crystal the power of the dark crystal and then we'll hopefully be reading together the upcoming month by month series beneath the dark crystal starting july of 2018 so with that there leaves you plenty to explore Thra. i always end my video saying you know enjoy exploring Thra. and when i've read through these books i really have enjoyed exploring Thra. and i'm looking forward to you know more month by month stories coming out starting in next month so there's plenty to explore uh, go check it out. Stop listening to me and go pick up a book. All right, peace out. Counterpart traveled here from distant stars. The crystal cracked. They can't go back without that shard. Reunited whole, synced back as one just like the stories told. A shard. A crystal shard. That's all you want. A crystal shard? <laughs>